hey everyone welcome back to my channel and welcome back for another edition of health class today we will be discussing another requested topic by one of our friends here in youtube simply when please subscribe to her channel we will be talking about obstructive sleep apnea or osa today we will be talking about the causes of OSA, the treatment and the diagnosis of OSA and how to live a healthy life with obstructive sleep apnea. So please keep on watching. My name is Ryan and I'm specializing in diabetes, primary care, men's sexual health, alcohol and drugs, and medicinal cannabis. This is a very important topic today, obstructive sleep apnea or OSA. Obstructive sleep apnea happens when a throat is partially or completely blocked at times while sleeping, causing a person to stop breathing. Breathing stops might happen for between 10 to 90 seconds and then wake up briefly, which restarts breathing. Let's watch this video so you will understand clearly the pathophysiology of obstructive sleep apnea. When you breathe, air travels down your throat, through your windpipe, and into your lungs. The narrowest part of that pathway is in the back of your throat. When you're awake, muscles keep that pathway relatively wide open. But when you sleep, those muscles relax, allowing the opening to narrow. The air passing through this narrowed opening may cause the throat to vibrate. That causes snoring which many people experience. But in some people, the throat closes so much that enough air can't get through to the lungs. When this happens, the brain sends an alarm to open the airway. Most often, this is associated with a brief arousal from sleep. The brain quickly reactivates the muscles that hold the throat open. Air gets through again, and the brain goes back to sleep. This disorder is called obstructive sleep apnea. Obstructive sleep apnea can affect all ages, but frequently as you grow older and gain weight. The worse or severe stage of OSA you have, the higher the risk of coronary artery disease, heart attack, heart failure, stroke, and irregular heart rhythm. In short, if you have obstructive sleep apnea and the stage of your OSA is a little bit worse or severe, then you're putting yourself at a higher risk of developing heart-related or cardiac-related diseases. Do you snore? Or do you know anyone, a friend, a family, who snores? <coughs> If you snore like that, or you know someone who snores like that, better to consult your doctor or consult a sleep physician and maybe have a sleep study or sleep test because you never know, it could be an obstructive sleep apnea. Because of blockage in the throat or airway passage, snoring while sleeping is common. But not all snorers or people who snores have obstructive sleep apnea. What are the common symptoms of OSA? Some of them are excessive daytime sleepiness because you don't have enough sleep at nighttime. So during the day, you feel tired, you feel sleepy. And like what I mentioned earlier, 
loud snoring is a common symptom of OSA, but not all snores have OSA. Episodes of stopped breathing during sleep is also common. Waking up in the morning with a dry mouth or sore throat. Waking during the night and gasping or choking. Morning headaches. Trouble focusing during the day. Mood changes such as depression, low mood, or easily gets upset. High blood pressure. And reduced sexual desire. Who are at risk of developing obstructive sleep apnea? Age is a risk factor. It increases as person gets older. Men are higher risk. In women, their risk increases as they become peri or postmenopausal. Weight. The heavier you are, the higher risk of developing obstructive sleep apnea. And some physical features can be risk factors, such as a lower jaw that is small or positioned farther back, an enlarged tongue at its base, large tonsils, a neck size larger than 17 inches, excess fat surrounding the throat area. Other risks, such as cigarette smoking, smokers have three times higher risk. Family history, because it can run in the family, and nasal congestion. Treatments include wearing a specialized machine, such as CPAP, BiPAP, and APAP. But we will be discussing CPAP for today because it is the common machine that people wear. CPAP or Continuous Positive Airway Pressure is a machine that uses mild air pressure to keep breathing airways open while sleeping. Some of the important benefits of CPAP are it improves sleep quality, it lowers the risk of heart attack and stroke, it reduces daytime sleepiness, and it may stop snoring. Some people use mouthpiece. Mouthpiece is used to thrust the lower jaw forward during sleep, keeping the airway open. Some of the benefits of mouthpiece are it reduces the number of pauses in breathing or episodes of shallow breathing. It helps in improving blood oxygen levels it helps in reducing the frequency and volume of snoring and it reduces daytime sleepiness. And as a last option, surgery can be done for obstructive sleep apnea. Obviously, it will be in consultation with your doctor or sleep specialist. That's it everyone. Thank you for watching. Remember, sleep disturbances can shorten a person's lifespan. So having enough sleep is very important. People living with OSA should ensure that they get enough sleep each night. Speak to a sleep specialist, sleep hygienist, a dentist, and your doctor to discuss better treatment plans. Enjoy your sleep and happy sleeping everyone. Stay safe and be healthy.